Today I'm going to take you through the build process of installing an auxiliary power system in the back of the Tundra to keep the fridge, the toilet, cell phones, and everything else charged up when we're out exploring. Coming up. I'm Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel we hone our outdoor cooking skills, we do reviews on camping and overland gear, and we showcase 4x4 vehicle modifications like the one we're going to talk about today. So the past couple of videos we've been taking a look at what it took for me to build out the interior bed organizer that you see behind me. One system that a lot of overlanders decide to install in their rig is some way to charge a auxiliary or house battery to power up devices and all that kind of stuff. Powering your fridges and charging your cell phones and lights isn't much of a problem when the vehicle's on and running and your engine is producing power through the alternator. But when you kill that, you really stand a little bit more risk of not being able to get your car started after sitting for a while with a draw on the system. A lot of overlanders and off-roaders and campers choose to put in an auxiliary battery system so that you don't risk running your starting battery too low to a point where you won't be able to turn over the engine when you go to leave in the morning. I definitely wanted to outfit the Tundra with a system similar in the back to keep everything charged up and powered. There's something to be said about taking on the challenge of doing this type of job yourself, learning some of the skills for 12 volt wiring, and just kind of understanding how your system works so that if there is a glitch while you're out exploring, you maybe have some of those baseline skills to diagnose and solve the problem. Let's jump into the video and take a look at how I built my system. I've been messing around today with configuring the dual battery system and um, just kind of playing around with where I'm going to be mounting things and where I'm going to be laying things out. I wanted to stop really quick and talk to you guys about the components I'm using for the dual battery system. I'm just showing you kind of how I did it. You're going to have to consult the user's manuals, kind of make those own uh, decisions on how you go about wiring up your battery based on that and not based on my information. So for my system, I decided to go with the Red Arc BCDC 1225D system uh, right here. It's a 25 amp charging system for between your primary starting battery and your secondary auxiliary battery, whether that's that's under the hood or in my case I'm putting it in the back of the truck so that's gonna be what's charging my whole system for the back of the truck secondly I really wanted something that was going to be able to monitor my batteries levels and give me a nice digital readout uh, in the back of the truck as well as some sort of Bluetooth capable system and I chose to go with the Victron Energy BMV 712 so this will give me all my power readouts and battery consumption from all the different load draws on my system and and uh, just history of my battery's life and all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be really cool to have this in there and uh, just give me that peace of mind. I can check on things when we're driving down the road by just accessing the app. So along with the BC to DC charger from Red Arc and the Victron battery monitor, there'll be a couple of 40 amp breakers as well as I'm gonna be doing a 90 amp breaker to the uh, fuse panel. The heart of any dual battery system is of course the battery. It's gonna be powering my DC fridge, my wrap on grid toilet, lights, charging capabilities for phones and tablets and all that kind of stuff in the back, I chose to go with a Battleborn lithium ion battery. So really quickly before I go pumping any holes or anything like that, I'm just gonna show you guys where I'm at right now, which is kind of just layout phase and figuring out how the hell everything wires together. I literally like took two different color pieces of rope and started running them around to different things so I could fully grasp it. I'm just, I'm so visual that reading something, even looking at some of the layouts in the user's manuals, I'm just like, I use as much help as I can get, but uh, I took all of that off. I, I did that before and now I feel like I've got a pretty good idea of how it's all going to go together. I'll show you what it looks like so far. Here you have basically my initial layout of everything. We already talked about the base plate and how I figured out I was going to need to support it as well as elevate it a little bit in this thing to be able to fit it this way to completely optimize the space over to the left of this area for, I don't know exactly what's gonna go in this area, in this cabinet, but I wanted to make sure I had as much space as I can in a square format. So I wanted to make sure this battery went in front to back. Just a battery tie down linked into that same system. Love this thing. I mean, I got it for my birthday. I can't thank my wife and my parents and everybody who threw in on it. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a thousand dollar battery for sure. Um, 
an investment, but I hope it'll pay off in the long run. This here is the Victron battery monitoring faceplate. And there's gonna be a piece of wood covering the front of this. So this is just gonna get mounted flush into that so I can see it from where we'll be hanging out in the back of the habitat. I should be able to see it from the bed as well as uh, outside of the truck, depending on how good my eyesight is. So that'll get, just get mounted there. And then, yeah, this is kind of the initial configuration that I'm thinking of. You know, fuse block, way too many freaking fuses. This is the bus, all your negative or earth gets run through that for anything that you want to monitor. That will go negative to here then this negative to this negative, and then this positive out of here over to the positive in the battery, from what I understand. And then this just gets plugged into this. So that'll give you the connection from all of your auxiliary stuff coming out of your fuse panel here and powering your devices and your my fridge and all that kind of stuff. So this is the BCDC battery to battery charger. So this gets hooked up to the front battery as well as earth ground to the chassis, all sorts of different stuff. I am gonna have the fuse panel run through a 90 amp circuit breaker so that I can just kill that if I want to. If I'm not gonna drive the truck for a while, I just can kill the whole system so that I know that nothing is drawing you know, a parasitic load, I guess, other than uh, the screen for this. And this is just a 40 amp breaker. I'm gonna be running between the positive power coming from this to the positive on the battery. So it's just a redundancy as far as safety goes. I'll have two 40 amp breakers in the system, one in the beginning of the system by the main charging starting battery, and then one in the end system between this and the uh, chargers. That's where I'm at right now. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to drill out my holes to kind of make it clean. I mean, I want this to be as clean as possible. The nice thing is I've got a nice cavity behind this thing where all the extra cords can lay and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just trying to lay out where I'm going to be poking my holes, the type of grommets I'm going to be using. So that's where I'm at and I'll show you guys some more soon. Not sure if I just have a It's a really nice night out. I'm sure you guys can't see me at all. Got the battery system kind of put in place right there. All the, the dual battery components put in place there. Those two holes in the top were for DC plugs and I just didn't plan them out right. 12 volt plugs, I just didn't plan them out right. They landed right in the spot where it was gonna butt up against the uh, side of the habitat there. So I had to take them out. But yeah, I. Uh, just got this temporarily run here, kind of not buttoned up yet, but got ground going right here, following this. It, this isn't finalized. I'm going to encase all that in split loom like this. Power comes from the back as well along the frame, which I'll show you in a second. And then it goes into this 40 amp breaker and I'm going to wire it from the end, 40 amp to right here. Those two wires run here and then they kind of disappeared down there below. Then I'm gonna encase all that in split loom. Take you underneath and show you where I ran the wires from there, so. Yeah. If you've never seen split wire loom, it's just plastic casing, cut down the end so you can feed your wire in there. Okay, so I've got my battery diagram and uh, I would not use this. 
<laughs> kind of in the middle of this bed install and about to put in the uh, you know circuit board and component panel in the back of the bed organizer build. Got my positive power connections, I got my negative power connections. I'm gonna connect a negative through this hole here from the front battery and then in the back. I've got all of my, my wires and everything. This is for a later solar application. This goes to the positive, to the battery in the front, and then feeds into the Red Arc uh, charge controller. These, I have to refresh my memory. I know one of them goes to ignition, and these basically, how you hook these up, kind of um, tells the system what style of battery, whether it's a lithium or an AGM or a standard gel cell or whatever it is, you know. It tells the system what kind of battery uh, you're running for your auxiliary. But for the time being, I'm gonna get the positives connected to the front battery next, mount the panel kind of in place and start making the connections on the other side. I'll have to drill a hole out in the front of the cabinet for the Victron uh, little readout display module thing. And then I'll have to also figure out how I'm gonna wire in my um, fridge and auxiliary power outlets and all that kind of stuff into this system here. Because it's been so long since I've worked on this thing, I've, I've got to refresh my memory. So I'm going to start putting components in, and if I end up having to take components out, so be it. That's just the one I'm going to have to do. But uh, yeah, let's get started hooking some of this power up. At least for my positive back here, I'm going to put on one of these Anderson plugs. So if I need to separate it and take the whole system out, I can easily just unplug this, but it's still a solid connection. So I'm going to go ahead and get this crimped in there. Cut away a little bit more of the wire casing here. I always seem to forget throwing my shrink wrap on there ahead of time. So not this time, Satan. But yeah, I got these bad boys. These are just like a heavy duty style lug crimp. All right, now I'm going to go do that on the inside of the truck as well to the uh, positive coming from the battery. Got my positive cord coming in from the battery up front. It's obviously not connected right now. Got my Anderson plug lug. Let me get that started. Feed that on. it makes too much of a difference what side this Anderson plug yeah I don't think it makes much of a difference so you just basically feed this till you hear it click and then it's locked in there and do the other side the same way that I already did out there and then we'll be able to plug them together and make it a nice tight connection uh, just so you're aware if you're taking electrical wiring advice from me you better check your sources because uh, I'm winging it but you know what take on the challenge kind of figure some things out for yourself do some research ask your local 4x4 guys just basically Give it a shot. It's not all that difficult. Uh, assuming I don't burn down my truck, I have no regrets about doing it. That guy's done. Get fed through there. And actually, just get plugged right into the back of the negative side on this Anderson plug. Clicked in. Good to go. I may be wrong, and I may regret this, but I think I'm going to go about mounting this battery panel, the circuit panel, up somewhat final fit and finish here. Go ahead and put her in place. Kind of back down a little bit a few spots the whole reason behind this whole project the battleborn lithium ion battery so i'm going to go ahead and hook up the positives got the battery connections kind of back up on there loosely now i'm going to go start tightening everything down I'm going to continue to uh, put together the bed storage system, get these back panels bolted in. Next in the battery system, I'm going to mount the Victron uh, battery monitoring system. I'm going to run the power to that along with the uh, Ethernet cable or whatever kind of cable it is. It's just a data cable. Get that all mounted up. That'll be mounted up out here, I think. Coming together pretty good. I'll show you guys the battery system next steps once I get uh, some of this box put together for the other video and uh, we'll be back. I got most of my storage system bolted in. I'm super excited about that. I've got the main brain and all the uh, electrical paneling installed. Got it all there, bolted down. So my next step is to get the Victron little battery monitoring faceplate thing uh, installed. I'm thinking that's uh, gonna get installed right here. 
figure out how I'm gonna plug in the fridge and the toilet. Other than that, I'm gonna be, you know, figuring out lighting for the inside, which I've got a couple different options, and then figuring out auxiliary plugs. So 12 volt battery chargers for the phone and the battery packs and, you know, just plug in accessories and that kind of stuff. I think some of those components, those 12 volt sockets are gonna get wired into these areas. So these are designed for those 12 inch sockets. And then these are, I believe, uh, fitted for kind of like a standard size little round um, rocker panel switch. I have both. All right, well, using my handy dandy super precise plastic calipers, this is a two inch opening. I got a drill for this uh, head unit here. This gave me an excuse to buy a new hole saw set because I was missing two inch. So to get this thing to monitor both your starter and your auxiliary battery, you got to wire one of the two accessory port wires. I don't know exactly what you'd call them, but there's two wires that come with it. You can either wire them both up, I believe, to the positive of your auxiliary battery, and that will monitor its temperature, which might be good in this case, being a lithium ion, you know, you want to make sure you know what the temperature is on that thing, because they don't really like the cold too much. For it to be set up so it monitors your auxiliary as well as your starter battery, you have to run one of those two component wires to your auxiliary battery. Probably not going to do that today. Probably going to wire it up to the auxiliary battery back here just to get it calibrated and all that kind of stuff. That might be the best way to run it, honestly, with the lithium ion side of things. So I'm going to do that next and then get the data cable run as well. I'll be back to tell you how that goes. Okay, well, that was a crazy hassle. I was having issues. My uh, positive auxiliary and auxiliary lead um, to the Victron shunt uh, grounded out and blew the fuse. So I was hunting down a blown fuse, not getting the uh, head unit to power up. But as you can see, or can't see, one of the two, the head unit is powered up. And that's exciting. And the fridge is temporarily powered up too. Um, right now I am wiring in two 12 volt plug onto the side panels here. Um, I'm gonna wire them together. And then I ran the wire for that. Uh, it's going over to the fuse panel inside the circuit block area there. I'm gonna go up over here. There's our channel all the way down. And then I'm gonna pop it down over there. So. I have a whole bunch of these right angle little spade connectors and these are good to get behind there because they just go onto the back of the blade of the 12 volt plug or whatever kind of plug you have. They just match up to that and then they can shoot directly down at the angle you need them to. And that helps in these tight spaces and the corners. Got my wire run for the power plugins over there. It's gonna be cell phone and that kind of stuff. Figure out how to wire, how I'm gonna run the wiring for the fridge. That shouldn't be too extremely difficult. Gotta figure out how to mount this or where to mount this. This is the kind of the heavier duty plug, I believe, for the uh, National Luna fridge. And somewhere where it's gonna allow me to extend the fridge out completely, keeping this wire up and out of the way, but also allowing it a little bit of flex. This thing is going to need to go out that far. Well, I could plug it in over there. I think this area back here gives me a nice little area to mount the plug, a little junction box on the back side of it to protect it from anything in here, and then also be able to run the power all the way to the back side through there, and then all the way around. Yeah. Right. Now I got to wire up power to it. Well, today we're another day into the backup battery build. I think I'm actually going to go about connecting the DC to DC charger to the front battery right here. I've got a 40 amp fuse block right there and I need to connect from this to the power supply on the start battery. And then it'll pretty much be all wired up other than um, just accessories and stuff like that. A couple of accessories wired in so far. I'm gonna make a little lug connector for it and do the final connection, test the system out. any smoke yet. Let's go check out inside. 
All right, right now I don't think it's getting any charge because it's not producing over the threshold it would need to start transferring the power from the front start battery to the auxiliary battery in the back. I'm gonna go crank the key over and see if the uh, charge lights light up on this bad boy. Heck yeah, that's pretty sweet. Think that's official. We're charging the auxiliary battery. Hooking up Victron Connect now. 13.6 volts. All right, well, when I kicked off the truck, it dropped from 13.62 voltage output to 13.38. And then the charge light stayed on for, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, and then they flicked off, and that's when the uh, voltage changed. So that must have shut off the power from the start battery to the auxiliary battery. Well, I'm gonna keep wiring up some lights and some different things. I got the fridge on. Well, at the moment, I'm just wiring in a couple of additional marine uh, 12 volt sockets just for, for some 12 volt plugs there. I got my sockets wired in on this to my on off switch so I can toggle that on and off whenever I want to. And then my next thing is I've got kind of two different styles of lights I'm going to be wiring up on the underside inside the habitat. One is just a adhesive backed red LED light strip because red is supposedly not going to track the bugs as much. So I got the red for that reason. Now I just need to uh, figure out where my lights are going to go and wire those in. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the build process of that a little bit, and it gave you a little bit of insights into what it would take to build your own. I definitely recommend you doing the research for yourself and seeing if this might be a level of job that you feel comfortable doing. Of course, I always encourage people to, you know, learn some new skills and all that kind of stuff, but electrical wiring done the wrong way does have the potential for some risk of burning down your vehicle or worse. So just make sure you really understand what you're doing and seek out the help of people who do if you don't. Let's take a look and talk through the system System now that it's finished. Well, there you have it. This is kind of the final build so far of the backup battery system. We went over all these components in the video, but I'll go through them really quick. The power comes from the front of the truck, goes through a 40 amp breaker. From there, it goes down through the engine bay and follows the frame, zip tied really high and tight above where it would come in contact with any road debris or anything like that. It pops up through the back grommets in the back of the truck bed here and splits off going into the Red Arc BC to DC 12 volt charger and to the ground connection on the battery. The battery also has an additional ground that I connected a shorter distance to the back of the frame in the rear of the truck. From the Red Arc charge controller, it goes into a 90 amp breaker right here that allows me to cut off power to my fuse block. And then the negative power is routed through a shunt right here partnered with the Victron battery monitoring system, which allows me to monitor drops and draws in power consumption when the battery is pulling. The Battleborn lithium ion battery is the heart and soul of this system. If I ever need to, I could definitely expand into two with the space that I have in here, but for the time being, this seems to be doing the job. Also, I have a pretty big open area on this side of the cabinet that I built that is housing my foldable solar panel, as well as just some different electrical components for different accessories from around the truck. That's pretty much it right here. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that's consuming the power. First things first, the Victron battery monitoring system. This system is fully Bluetooth capable that comes with a supporting app that you can use that gives you a complete readout on the life of your battery, the history of your battery, all that kind of stuff. It's been really cool. I'm still learning the system completely. It also comes with this head unit here that will allow you to go through all the different settings to set up your battery. It has a little at a glance redundancy to make sure your battery is healthy and performing properly. Now the box on the side over here, you could probably see quite a bit of an electrical and that's where all the electrical is run in the back. I'm probably gonna get a little Velcro panel to cover that up. Um, but I do want to leave that accessible for any times that I need to kind of add different wiring to the system for one reason or another, or if I ever need to diagnose any issues. The power from the fuse panel exits the box and goes up these uh, split loom and kind of tucks away underneath this top rail here. Another thing you can see is this little strip. This is an adhesive red LED. The reason I use red is because I've always heard that red attracts less insects. So if we are hanging out inside or getting inside, hopefully the red light at night will not attract as many insects. Right here, I have my lights. 
really close to the bed so I can just reach down and flick the first rocker panel over to get some light on the situation. The second switch right here, I wired in to run a different set of lights that I uh, took out because they just weren't gonna be what I was looking for. This final switch down here turns on the 12 volt power for these two 12 volt sockets. So anything that's a 12 volt, just standard socket, I have a little marine grade plug right here that I can toggle on or off. Now, similarly over on this side, I have a couple different style of outlets. I have a 12 volt plug up here, which is just a USB. So I can have my cell phone and everything run up there for me and my wife to charge our cell phones at night. This is just a little USB light that I have plugged into it right now. And then down here, I have just another standard uh, USB outlet like I had over there. Honestly, the last thing that I really have to show as far as the power system goes is where the fridge is plugged in right now. I have a socket wired in right here that you saw in the video. This is just a cord run through there all the way back to the fuse panel. It goes along this edge and is secured to this just with some cord keepers and goes into the back of the fridge. And when I extend the fridge out, you can see this just happened to be kind of the perfect length to allow for just enough slack for it to not get bound up in the fridge slide itself but also allow enough length to fully extend the fridge. So lastly, this fridge does stay in here 24 seven for the most part. And I like to keep drinks and just condiments and everything fully stocked in there. So I actually have the regular AC plug that this thing comes with also plugged in so that when I get home, I can just run an extension cord out to the truck, not have the draw on the system of the fridge, running that battery down to dead, but also keep the fridge powered and ready to go. I just run it out the side of the window, close this door and I'm good to go. I hope this video inspires you to go out and take on a job like this, learn some 12 volt wiring. I am by no means a master, but every job that I do, I get a little bit more confident in it and I haven't burned a truck down yet, knock on wood. I'm gonna put a link to all the components that I used in this system or as many as I can find in the description section below in the video. If you have any comments, please throw them in the comments section below. I definitely like interacting with you guys and I'm here to help if I can in any way. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon to get notified when I launch a new video every week. Definitely hit that like button to let me know I've done a good job or if you hated the video, you can hit the unlike button. Either way, if you wanna follow more about Evergreen Overland, you can link up with me over on Instagram. I'm at Evergreen Overland as well as at evergreenoverland.com and Evergreen Overland on Facebook. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.